Nightline. I'm Gwen Hall, your host, and we are so glad that you've joined us on this Friday night. Tonight, our program is about heroes. We've got special guests in the house, special singing that I'll be introducing. I'm so glad to see what God is doing right now. You know what? He's coming soon. Tonight, if you're not ready, the number's on your screen. Maybe you've let your walk get cold. Now's a good time to pick up the phone, call them, let them pray with you. It's an exciting time right now. I'm going to do an old song out of that Red Book hymnal, and you can just sing along with me. This is for you tonight. Well, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Help me sing it.
announcing peace, proclaiming news of happiness. Our God reigns. Oh, yes, you do. with our best praise this night to lift you up, to glorify you. We thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do in this service. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Oh, and at this time, I want us to go to wait. Honey? So good to be with you this evening, and as always, I trust you've had a great week and a good day today. You know, we should be able to say yes to that because Every day is the day that the Lord has made, and the Word says we should be able to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, so take time to just praise Him, exalt His name, and lift Him up. Well, our prayer partners are here. They come Monday through Friday to take your call. And if you've got a need, no matter what it is, as I say each week, you could be going through something spiritual, financial, physical, family problems, whatever, give us a call and let us join our faith with yours, lifting that need up before the Father. And you know there's power in the unity of prayer. So let's uh, take time tonight to just uh, join with you and pray over that need. Gwen, it's always so good to be here and to know that our prayer partners come faithfully each week and and all. 
It is a great, great joy just to even come in here in his presence, even right. when you were praying a while ago and as our guest joined us. You know, we always just thank God ahead of time for what he's going to do for you and in your life, don't we? That's right. And we just we just ask you tonight to just join in. We're going to have a wonderful service. Uh, it's another one of our Heroes program. And tonight we are recognizing a lady out of Hendersonville, North Carolina, by the name of Brenda Swan, how she ministers and not only just takes care of the homeless, but she actually cooks meals and feeds the homeless. We're honoring her tonight on the second hour. Our faithful prayer partners have been here coming all this year, praying and lifting you up. You've, you've called and they've been on the other end of the line. That's you know right. that means everything to call a number and have somebody to say, hey, can we pray? Can we agree with you? Can we believe God with you? That's right. And you know one thing that Gwen loves very much is uh, the good praise reports. Oh, yeah. And we had some good ones last week. Oh, and yes. I'll tell you what, if you've got a good praise report this week, give us a call and let us share that. Because what it's going to do <laughs> is if somebody's going through yes. the same situation that you are, it helps build their faith exactly and and all and that means so much oh yeah because you know the word says takes just that little faith of a grain of mustard seed that's small when you start looking the size of a mustard seed to exercise and touch the throne of god so uh get on the phone and give us those good praise reports and and everything and we we should have plenty of those after this year that We've been through. I'm glad to see most all that behind us and all. And I'm looking forward to what God's going to do from this day forward. Amen. You've got a good praise report. You just have to give it right now. Oh, yes. Got your I know. Count. Amen. I've, I've been having, <laughs> I've had problems this past year myself. Physically, it wasn't COVID, but I had some physical problems, the low blood and all. And today I got a call and it is just within a, a few tenths of a point, a fraction of being where it should be. So I'm praising well, we God, give for, God that. Praise for that. Amen. Tonight. Amen. Glory to God. That's awesome, isn't it? I tell you, it is. We've it's, got some wonderful music. The Millers come through every year. They didn't get to all come, but Randy came. Randy Simpson, he is our special guest here tonight. He is going to bless you. Now's a good time to pick up the phone. If you want to listen and just sing along with some good songs tonight, he's going to do a song now, one of my favorites. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Randy Simpson. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Gotta make it to heaven somehow No, the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around He's offered everything that's got a name All the wealth I want, worldly fame If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now I started traveling for the Lord many years ago I had a lot of heartache, I had a lot of grief and woe. But when I would stumble, then I would humble down. And there I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me, he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want, world of fame. If I could, still I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. There's nothing in the world that would ever take the place of God's love. Silver and gold can never buy money touch from above. When my soul needed healing and I began to feel in His power. It's there I would say it wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want. Worldly fame, if I could, still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow Though the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around He's offered everything that's got a name All the wealth I want, worldly fame If I could, still I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now 
take nothing for my journey now. <laughs> well, our scripture tonight can go right in there with that because it's a great scripture to use along with that song. It's Colossians 3 and 16 and it reads like this. Let the word dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I love that because, you know, that's what we need to be doing is that having the Word dwell within us. The problem with the world right now out here is too many people has got the world dwelling in them and not the Word of God. Come on. And that makes a big difference in our lives. I want to be led by the Word of God not what's going on in this world. This world is all to pieces in so many ways. You look around and you and the things on the news, it's just not good. They don't report a lot of what should be reported as far as what's good that's going on. And what's going on is there is a move of God that is taking the place right. in people's hearts. And I like what it says here where it says that that we should be teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. Well, well, we should be getting together. We should be coming together and talking about the goodness of the Lord, singing about Him, and singing unto Him. Oh, yeah. As it says there to last, singing with grace yes, in your hearts yes, yes. to the Lord. That's right. And Gwen, I know that's something you love to do. I see you at times get on the piano at the house, and you're not just singing to be singing. You're singing unto Him. Love it. And it makes a difference. Love it. Love those times. And there's a lot of times of the morning there'll be a song come to me. I, know, I was telling uh, some of the crew down here, there's been a song for three weeks that's come to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've told you about it. I know. And then I did research, and I'll tell you this much about it. Fanny Crosby wrote it in uh, 1835. She wrote over 8,000 songs. 8,000 songs and her blind. Mm. Isn't that something? That's awesome. That is awesome. Awesome. Yes, I did some research on it. And maybe next week, maybe next maybe week. Maybe next week. <laughs> mm -hmm. I might sing it. You know, it's, it's how God, <laughs> a lot of people like all the songs she wrote, you know, and, and all, that they came through her in trials and things that happened. That's and right. she, God uses, she wow. used that from the Lord to produce something that was going to help people. And look and at the seed she him, left for everybody else. Give him the praise. You know it? Yes. The seed she sown, people are still being blessed by it. That's right. Honey, will you pray? Father, we thank you for the day, for your blessings, Father. We know that you're going to touch people's hearts oh, yes, tonight, Father. Father, as we go forward in this service. Father, we just commit it to you right now. Yes. In your precious name we pray. Amen, amen. Going back now to some more good singing. Randy Simpson's going to do a song. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Jesus prayed to his Father in the garden. Not my will, Lord, but only thine be done. And as he walked up that dusty road to Calvary, Jesus knew that the victory would soon be won. Thank
shown to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus prayed to his Father on Golgotha. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as he died on that rugged cross of Calvary, Jesus knew that salvation had just begun. A beautiful song, Randy Simpson. And you know, if we started thanking him now, we could, I, just, I don't know if we could thank him enough for all that he's done for us. But I'll tell you that, he's faithful. He's always there. He said he'd never leave us. He'd never forsake us. He'd be a friend to us always. And in this past year, since Wade had been going through some health issues, I'm telling you, we have called upon him and he has truly been when we've needed him, right, right where we've needed him. God's been there. He's faithful. And he'll see us through those times. You think sometimes, can you make it? Can I make it? Yes, you can. You can make it with the help of the Lord. I want you to know that our prayer partners come faithfully Monday through Friday. And the number's on your screen. And I would love to hear some awesome praise reports tonight. And then prayer requests. If you have prayer requests and you want us to pray and agree with you, we're going to be praying through the service tonight. Then right now is a good time to pick up the phone and call in and tell that person what you need. They'll agree with you and pray with you, and then they'll send those over, and we'll pray over them also. My very first guest of the evening is a lady that's been on with me a couple times, not in this past year at all, uh, not in the year that we've had COVID, but she does a work because God told her, and her name is Brenda Swan. She's from Hendersonville, North Carolina. Welcome tonight. Thank you it's so, so much. good to see you. Yes. I, I know that this has been a busy time for those that are seeing you for the first time. Tell the folks what you do there in the Hendersonville area. In the Hendersonville area, I work with the homeless. I also work with other individuals that need furniture, household furnishings, clothing. I cook uh, home-cooked meals, and I take it and feed it local churches. I also go to the streets and also to the warehouse where I provide clothing and other essential needs. How has it been different in this year with the COVID, with so many? How has that been out there on the streets? Well, a lot of the feeding, the people that were feeding quit feeding, yeah. and they weren't getting any food, so I started feeding even more and I never stopped feeding. And then I Thank God you didn't. Thank God I didn't because they were destitute. You know, they were hungry out there and it broke my heart. So I started taking more and more to the streets and getting the food out there to them. On an average, how many would you say you would have? A number, a roundabout number. And would this be the, the women and children that live in the cars? Yeah, would this be including them as well? How many would you think? Well, all together, probably around 100 people all together that I met since I first started doing the feedings. So you feed that many people a week? No, I don't feed that many people but a you, week, but they're on, you know, on the streets. I'm talking about all the different people I've yeah. met through the beginning of when I 
right. started doing Now, it. how many do you think during this COVID period that you've actually just fed and helped and kept warm? And how many do you think, just a roundabout figure? I don't know, maybe 20 to 35, something wow. like that. Getting sleeping bags out, tarps, uh, food bags, you know, the trays of food I make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the cooking that you do. And the cooking. And I do know that there have been several business people that have kind of joined in and helped you somewhat. And I want to get right to the point of what is your greatest need that we can pray and believe with you as the need you know, we're in hot weather right now. Hot weather is just as bad as cold weather. Right. You know, them trying to keep cool. But what would be the greatest need, Brenda, right now that you would have? Well, tarps with tarps. the rainy weather, ponchos, raincoats, and the travel food, which uh, some different ministries and have uh, donated uh, mm -hmm. the food, the food that's in these bags. And which I looks put, like there's crackers and canned food and soup. Yeah, like tuna. beef jerky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beef jerky, oh, that's good. And I write, Jesus loves you on all the bags. Oh, that's wonderful. I see applesauce. So this is something that they can take while they're walking even. Yes, and then sometimes they're at their campsite or they'll get sick or they can't come out and they have that food. I've had them, you know, there for days, you know, that they couldn't get out mm -hmm. or for different reasons and they have that, but then they can also have meals. They don't have to just eat one meal a day. Yeah. So, I, you know what? I thought about tarps in the winter, but I didn't think about tarps for the rain. That That's definitely a need, isn't it? Yeah. Well, tents, you know, you put that in under your tent mm -hmm. or they can use it to shelter them, mm -hmm. put above. So actually several of them for each homeless person because they put them above and under and it keeps the moisture from coming up in the bottom of the tents. I, I want to I get to a little bit of a story because there's probably a lot of people that are viewing and seeing you for the very first time. And plus it's been a year since you've been on. But how, how did the, the vision of this ministry actually start? Well, uh, my son was murdered on 7th Avenue where I frequently go mm -hmm. to feed him and uh, so after he was murdered, uh, I, wasn't, I was backslidden. I wasn't living for the Lord at the time. And then I came back to the Lord in 94. And then God uh, gave me a vision of the symbol of the ministry. And then he gave my husband the name. And he said it's called the given heart because we give from a heart. And that's the truth. Yes. I, did, I don't know if I ever asked you how old was he when he passed? He was 17. 17 years old. Yeah, he was brutally murdered and lived nine days in a coma, and then he died, and it almost destroyed my life. I, I just can't even imagine that. I can't imagine that. And so how did the ministry was birthed from that? Yes, yes. Did God speak to you to start this ministry? Yes. Out of that? Yeah. Wow. What did you think when he first told you? I was I was so excited, you know, because I'm you know I'm seeing this vision, you know, and I never saw the the colada before, and then I discovered afterwards that it means love, friendship, and lo loyalty. Mm -hmm. So I thought, wow, you know, that goes right along with the giving heart because it's from the heart, you know, and then it's friendship. It's uh, not judging them, loving them where they are, just like Jesus did me when before I come to Christ, you know. Did that help bring healing to you when you started this ministry? Yes. Was that a beginning of your healing process? Yeah. I know you're married, and, and, and tell me, I don't know if I've ever even asked you this or not, <laughs> but how did your husband, how did he respond to this? I mean, I'm sure, I know he backs you, but yes. you know, when you shared that with him, what did he say? He was excited. He oh. was excited and he was right there because, you know, <laughs> like he said, well, he's the one that gave you the name, and he said, it's called that because we give from our heart. Yeah. So he was right on board and there with me, helping me. Um, if, you, if you're seeing this for the first time, we have her address, the Given Heart Ministry. It is incorporated. And some of the things that she showed you tonight that, she, that they, they carry with them in a plastic bag, she could use things like that, the tarps, even when it's rainy. Or if you just want to give a donation, we have the, the address up here on the screen. And I'll... I pray tonight that you get behind her and help her 
when God speaks to us and tells us to do a specific thing, and thank God for your obedience, because I know that was a painful time. You said he was 17. What was his name? Donnie Delaney. It had to be a painful time, and then the Lord speak to you to go out and help people. Well, God's given me healing in different directions. Yeah. Uh, God put me in the bed for three days and had me start writing a book. Wow. It's called Miracles Through Forgiveness. I don't know if there's other parts, but he put me in a bed for three days. I couldn't get up. I wasn't physically sick, but I couldn't stand up, and he started giving me words. You have that book? You have a book? No, You're I You're still working on it. I'm still working on it. I'm still working <laughs> on still it. It's still a work in progress. But I cried a lot, Aww. and that was one part of the healing. And then when God took me back to the streets on 7th, that was another part of my healing because God gave me the opportunity for a lot of souls to be saved because he, as we were going from the tent revival on 7th Avenue up the road, God started giving me a vision of the pavement turning white. He says, I'm going with you. And then before that, when I was in the car, he said, before you were going in mourning, but now you're going in victory. That's what he said as we were lined up in the cars, just like a funeral. And then as I was going up the road, he started turning the pavement white and showing me the vision. I'm going with you. You know, this is a bad area. I knew it. But he was going yeah, with me. And people came from all up above, up above, and all the children, and the whole place was covered with people. He provided a music and all these people it's the first time i'd ever spoken on a microphone and uh well anyway i had women coming and running to me grabbing me crying and weeping and they would look at me and pull their head back and they said my god my god he's done a work in you because i gave my testimony that i forgave the people that murdered my son so that's why god gave me those miracles to be able to have the opportunity to do that where he was murdered because that's the area he was murdered do you know how I knew of you? How? Through friends of ours, uh, Karen and Glenn Hunt, said, you've got to have her on. Said, we met her, oh. you know, and she ministers to people, you know, and I remember the first time, you know, I met you, there was just this glow about you. And then I think the second time you came down, you brought a couple of the men that actually help you in the ministry. Yes. You need that help, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and then you came to the house. Yes. I think they're at, at Mountain Brook, and uh, not Mountain Brook, but where we live at the condos now. And we just loaded you down with all kind of things, that yes. blankets and these uh, tarps and stuff. And, and a heater. Furniture. And a heater. And a heater. Michael That's got, right. We and it kept him from freezing, <laughs> freezing out there with those tanks of propane you gave. Yeah, I think we had bought that. I thought, thought we would bought that heater in case our power was to go out. And we said, we want you to have it. Yes. And so God took care of us. Our power never went out. He's faithful. Yeah. But you know what? I thank you for your obedience. You're welcome. Thank you. I thank you. Not everybody can do what you do, and you still do it. You've been doing it since 2014 when he called you? Well, I there was a, a season where that, it stopped when I became sick, and then God healed me, and God delivered me from the medicines I was taking, and then God started speaking to me about it again, and then he started the ministry on. again, and Amen. then I lost another son uh, in 2018. You lost another son? Yes. So you've lost two sons? Yes. And the second son was how old? He was 30. 39, I think 39. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And what was his name? His name was Richard Swan. Well, bless your heart. You just, you've been through the storms, but God's carried you through. And what he's done for you now, he's doing through you. Because I know just being around those men you brought that night, and when you brought them to the house, they had the most respect for you. They have a real respect for you. And, and thank you. They're very... If I could find a word tonight to tell our audience, they were so appreciative. I guess that's a good word. Yes, they are. So appreciative. They, they don't take this woman of God for granted. They look at her as knowing that God sent her and very appreciative of, of what God's called you to do. Yes. And if just from mine and Wade's heart tonight, we say thank you. And I'm working on things to get together. And, and tonight, just I know we've just got just a few minutes left here, but 
what what is your greatest need where, where if people can't actually give to this ministry I think everybody could give something if it's just five dollars give something to help this woman of God but if you can't what would be the greatest thing for us to pray about tonight I need financial support I need a building or that I can be in one location with everything I do so tell me what kind of building do you need just any kind of building well uh, the Lord said retail retail building so I'm gonna sell and then I'm also gonna continue giving away right so what comes in, if you can't use it right then, you can use it to bring the money in to help the ministry. Yes. Am I right? Right. Okay. But I have to get the building and then I have to have support to be able you to, know, maintain to, op it. to operate yeah. it and maintain it. And it, and in the Hendersonville area, right. right, is there a particular section, maybe near where you feed? Well, that's what I'm hoping for. There's a couple buildings available now. One that needs a whole lot of work and the other one you know, it's pretty high in Hendersonville. Yeah. God knows. Yeah, God Can knows. Can I pray? Yes, please. Will you join me tonight as we pray yeah. over her needs? She has some specific needs tonight. And there's a scripture that says, is there anything too hard for God? There's not. God is able to do abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. And maybe if you don't have something that you could give to help her, you could pray for her. Her name is Brenda Swan, and she has the Giving Heart Ministry. That's what the Lord said. And Father, right now, I ask you to minister to my sister. Strengthen her. Bring healing to her body in the name of Jesus. Minister to those that help her, her husband, the different men, the different ones that help with foods and the needs. And then, Father, we ask for a building tonight. And I know that you have one. I know that you have something in place for her, for this ministry. She's already asked of you. We're praying about it now. And you said where two or more would agree on any one thing, it shall come to pass. This isn't a want. This is definitely a need, Father. So now that we've asked you, we say thank you. And we praise you for it. We continually praise you till we've seen it in Jesus' name. We give you the praise. Blessings upon her and her household, her family, those that work with her. Minister to all these folks, Lord, that are homeless. God, thank you for blessing her hands tonight as she prepares the food, Lord, that, that gives them strength and nourishment, nourishment, Lord. Thank you for that tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's going to be all right. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. Victory. Victory. I just see victory. Victory's in the house. And yes. God's going to move and He's going to bless. And when this comes to pass and you get the building, I don't have to be the first phone call. <laughs> You'll be one of the first. <laughs> but I sure would like to hear from you pretty quick. Okay. Gwen, I've got the building. You know, you got to see it. you got to yes. see it. Yeah. And when he calls you to do something, he not only call you, but he equips you. Right. And he has people that are watching, that are listening, that will stand with you. The Bible said, where well, two or three will agree on any one thing, it shall come to pass. Well, we're going back to another song that I really love. Randy, it's so good to have you here with us tonight in the mm -hmm. house. He's going to do a song now called The Lighthouse. There's a lighthouse on the hillside And it overlooks life's sea And when I'm tossed It sends out a light A light that I might see And the light that shines in the darkness now will safely lead me oh. and if it wasn't for 
that lighthouse My ship would sail no more Now everybody that lives around us They say tear that lighthouse down For the big ships they don't sail this way anymore There's no use of it standing around And then my mind goes back To that stormy night When just in time I saw the light It was the light from that old lighthouse that stands up there on the hill and I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to him for King Jesus is the lighthouse and from the rocks of he has shown the light around me so that I could clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse. Tell me, where would this ship be? Thank you, Randy. I remember years ago singing with a group called the Emanuels. I started with them when I was 19. You know, all of you know I just turned 70. But we got probably more requests for that one song, The Lighthouse, and what a message is in it. Wade's joined us over here tonight. And uh, let me look right here. If you know anything about Nightline, blue, these blue slips represent people that's just given their heart to the Lord. So we just give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I love the blue slips. Mm. And so we've got some more things that's come in. Uh, it said a man has been blessed through dialysis for 13 years. And he wanted Wade, gave you that praise report tonight, Wade. Yes. Amen. Here's Betty, just got good doctor report today. Now, you know I like these good praise reports. I'm loving this tonight. Got a good praise report from the doctor. No blood clots, no blockages. Enjoying the program tonight. Well, we need to give God praise. He gets all the glory. This prayer work it does. Does it always come when we think it's going to come? We, sometimes there's a season to everything. You know, it might be a time of waiting, going through tests, maybe being in the hospital, or it could be something instant. I remember when I was growing up, just as a little girl, my mama watched... Uh, Brenda, she watched Doyle Roberts on TV. I remember she had a huge cyst right here on her hand. And so one morning we were just at, we had church at home and we were watching TV. And he said, just stretch your hand toward the TV. I'll never forget this. I was just probably six or seven years old. And she had this cyst. She stretched her hand toward the TV yes. and I looked down 
and that cyst was gone right yes. then. God can choose to do it anyway. Wait, you know yourself, yeah, he's joined us over here tonight that he went through a time when he hurt his arm because of a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. We won't go into all that mm -hmm. story, but during that time he lost use of his hand and he was in therapy uh, for how many weeks, Wade? It oh, was, it was almost uh, two and a half months, something like that. To... And I'm telling you this to build your faith tonight because sometimes it'll come instant and sometimes it's it's a period of time. That's right. Ain't that right? I remember the situation because it was weeks before the healing took place. But uh, right before it took place, the neurologist told me that I probably would not have the use of my fingers yeah. back. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, once he said that, within a couple, nine days later, my hand came back. But the thing was, it was a couple, three or four months later, as I was praying, I asked the Lord, Lord, I thank you for my healing. I knew it could have been instantly, mm -hmm. but, but you know, it went through this period of time. And Gwen, just as plain as day, I heard these words. I waited till man said it couldn't be done. Wow, say that one more time. Somebody needs to hear yeah, that's that. That's right. Mm -hmm. I heard these words say, I waited till man said it couldn't be done. When that physician said I probably would not have the use of my fingers back, God stepped in. And as Gwen was saying, he's got his time and his place, and there's a reason for it. We, we live in a, a generation of the now, I call it now generation. Everybody wants everything now, instant, drive through. But God has his timing, and it's for a reason and for a purpose. And so that's why it's so good they that wait upon the Lord, you know, the scripture says, they shall renew their strength. And sometimes I think that comes by him fulfilling a prayer or a need in someone's life. People sometimes don't know how to wait. You know, I remember when I was a young girl and I was in high school and I just started working at a cafeteria. I'll never forget this. And there was a pocketbook I wanted so bad. I laid it away. It was called, back in. it was called a John Romain, and I paid on that pocketbook, I paid on that pocketbook, till I finally got it out. I paid on it, I don't remember how long it took, it took a long time. And then once I got it, I had that pocketbook, I had that pocketbook forever. You'd think, I, you know, I about got tired of it. But I said all that to say this, sometimes we don't want to wait, we want to pull out that card and use it right then. If we had landways, we'd appreciate sometimes more of what we have in our life. You know, that pocketbook probably don't mean nothing to you, but back then, now pocketbooks are my weakness. You'll have to ask Wade. There was one night here on Nightline, it was my birthday, and every guest, not knowing each other, brought me five pocketbooks. There was a lady from Hendersonville even brought, <laughs> I'll never forget that. But you know what? God knew it. That's <laughs> yeah. right. And I think he especially did that just for me. Now you probably, now my sister loves shoes in the same way I, <laughs> I love pocketbooks, but you know, that is just how, if you have to save for something and work for something, you know, you appreciate it a little more. I know, she she has, I'll put it this way, she has so many pocketbooks that after a while, I'll kind of slip and go through them and get a little change or a bill out of each one of them that she forgets that's in there, <laughs> then I can go buy me something, you know. <laughs> Ben's behind the scenes and that, but sometimes I'll carry that box pocketbook that I got from Hendersonville and I'll right. open it up and mm -hmm. I've taped it, I've kept it just, I love it, it's so unique. I like unique pocketbooks, but you know, it's just when you have to work for it and save for it, it means a little more. It mm -hmm. just does. It's kind of like probably when you got your first car and you saved for it and you paid. You know, we, right. we're living a day of time, like Wade said, we want it right now. I know I don't, I can't hear no amens out there, but I'm sure you're agreeing with me tonight. But we need to appreciate everything that God does for us. If it's, if it's something you're believing God for, maybe you're believing for a healing, maybe you're believing for a financial miracle. That's right. You know what? Just the Bible says, wait upon the Lord. And what does that require? Which I don't have a lot of patience, which that man has a lot of patience. He's, he's lived for, with me for almost 30 years. We've been married <laughs> almost 30 years. So he's had to have the patience to live with me. But you know what? If you're watching tonight, then you know what we're talking mm -hmm. about. 
Sometimes it's just the little things. It's in the little things that God does for us. Right. Honey, I know you've joined us over here and we're going to pray over these requests. And I've got another praise report oh, here. Oh, wow, well, I love Here's it. Here's a lady that yesterday said she was in her kitchen. Yeah. And her light fixture fell. Oh. Just missing her <gasps> and glass breaking and going everywhere. And she's giving God praise that she did not get hit. Thank God. And all. And that's, again, Gwen, that's the little things that we can say, thank you, Lord, you know, that I didn't get hit with that. Yeah. And all. But we have a lot to be thankful oh, for. Oh, yes, we do, Wade. Yeah. And all. Well, here are some requests. I've got several that want me to sing again tonight. I'm not sure I can. We'll just have to see about that. Um, here is James. Let's pray for him. His wife just passed. So, James, mm -hmm. we just ask the Lord to minister to you right now. Yes. And to be with you during this brain surgery. Yes. I believe right now, I don't know if you're at home or if you're in a hospital, but I know God is there with you. He won't leave you. He'll be right there. He'll send people in to just minister to you. And he'll just minister to you in such a way. Wade, will you just pray for this gentleman yes. right now? Father, right now we lift him up, Lord. I'm thankful we can come before the throne of love, mercy, and grace, Lord. And just call James' name, Father, yes. for comfort, for strength, for healing. And Lord, that you hear and that you answer prayer. Yes. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And we just ask the Lord to be yes. with him during this surgery. That's in right. Jesus' name. May you feel his presence. Honey, you've got another Yes, one. I've got Gwen here. Uh, John has heart problems that needing a touch from the Lord. And here's one that a, uh, uh, please pray for a grandchild uh, that has cancer, needing a touch from the Jesus Lord. Uh, here's another one that a person's going to the doctor on Monday and is praying for a good report Jesus on that. Name. Jesus name. Here's someone here that needs a lung transplant, someone that is battling cancer, someone that drowned, a whole family just needs ministering to. Jesus name, Billy T, Billy C, Melanie, Annie, Michelle, the whole family wants ministry. Someone that's experiencing, a woman that's experiencing panic attacks. We just want to lift her up. Father, we just lift up this lady yes. that's having panic attacks. I ask you, Lord, just to minister to her right now in the name of Jesus, knowing nothing's too hard for you. And then, Lord, to remember this family. Yes. We just speak together. There's power in agreement. We come against cancer. We speak to it to go this night in Jesus' name. We come against heart trouble, stomach issues. This one that has to have a lung transplant. And Father, be with this family that's had this drowning. Yes. Father, be with them and minister to them Touch this them, night Lord. in Jesus' name. Touch we thank them, you for it. In Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Here's a person, a praise report came through COVID. Giving yes. God praise for that. I have one. We've been praying for uh, Ann Graham, uh, Ann Franklin, Ann Graham Lots. Lots. Her son has been in the hospital. He's, in fact, he's the same age as our boys. Uh, when he's 50. He'd been in intensive care with COVID. Very serious. This is Billy Graham's, Reverend Billy Graham's grandson in Asheville. And they brought him out this morning of intensive care. And I just want to give God praise for that. I know there were a lot mm -hmm. of people, a lot of people praying and yes. standing. So yes. we are just covering Jonathan That's tonight. Right. Here's someone else has called in and said they always love watching Friday night that it's such a blessing. Uh, Donna called in needing prayer. Uh, here's someone else that uh, please pray for my mother uh, and all needs a touch from the Lord. Uh, here's someone else that uh, uh, someone needs uh, healing has corporal, uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. That's in the wrist there. Yes. And all. We speak healing to that. I've seen two or three that's come through that we're going to pray right now for. Depression. A spirit of depression. Yes. We just take authority over that spirit of depression in the name of Jesus. And we speak to it to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes. 
women, men, children. I know children that's been going through depression. We just speak to that to go. And Father, just minister to them right now. Mm -hmm. And if I could encourage you, you know, maybe this past year, a lot of people have been in, and I think that's brought, I think that's brought some depression, Wade. You can just get out and sit on your porch or just take a walk. Find somebody to call up on the phone and just talk to and minister to a little bit. You know, I think that would help. Wait, what else would you suggest? Take that authority over depression. Well, number one, just get in your word. Yes, the devil. Get in the that word. word. The yes. devil's a liar. Yes. And uh, you know, the one thing in the word, there's peace, there's strength, and it's all there. Just, just waiting on us to say, Father, I need you. Yeah, and that scripture that you love, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, renew their, their strength. strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They That's shall right. walk and not faint. Get in that word. And if That's you right. have to, I've done this. Read it out loud to That's yourself. It. Get up and preach That's to right. yourself. And I know, Brenda, in this past year, there's so much you've gone through, so much you've seen people go through. But I guess in all of that, too, there's been a lot of praise reports you've seen, what God has done yes. and all. And I want to say just appreciate so much your ministry and all that you do. And people help supply that need. You know, it's winding down. The first hour is gone. And stay tuned for the last half hour. We'll be right back.